In today's video, I have some Dollar Tree DIYs that you're not gonna wanna miss. Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to All Things Crafty, where I love to do all things crafty on a budget. This is part two of my spooky Dollar Tree haunted house. So I will leave that linked in the cards in the right hand corner. If you guys did not see that video, check out that video first and then come back to this one where I show you how to make all the little decor on the inside. So if that is something you're interested in, I have a huge goal of getting to 100K by October. My name's Melissa. I am pregnant mama of three and my baby boy is born in October and I know that we can reach that goal together. So just do all the YouTube -y things. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it out. If you think somebody would enjoy it, hit that subscribe button. And with that being said, let's jump into today's DIYs. Would also like to thank Birch Living for sponsoring today's video. So the first DIY we're going to do is this little spooky coffin and all I did was take these treat boxes from Dollar Tree and um, put that together. And the easiest way to do this is just to take it out of the package and then you're just going to make sure that all of the creases are nice and you know press down and then there's two tabs at the top and bottom that you're going to connect and then there is a another piece coming from the back that goes over top the top and bottom tabs then you're just going to tuck that into the back where there is a slot and literally that easy you have a little coffin now to sturdy this up a little bit because this is just thick paper um, they they don't stand up very well on their own so to make them stand up and feel a lot more sturdy all I did was take some Jenga blocks from Dollar Tree and hot glue them to the inside of this little mini coffin next I took one of these skeletons from the garland skeleton that I got from dollartree.com now they had these in store last year but this year I did not see them so I did just go online and order some um, but I do pull his legs off and set him aside. I then paint the entire coffin with two coats of white Waverly chalk paint. And then to make this spooky and look old and weathered, I took my chip brush and some antique wax from Waverly. And I just dry brush that all the way around the coffin as well as on the front. I wanted to make a cross for the front, but I wanted to have like a 3D effect. So all I did was take a small popsicle stick, I cut off the ends, and then I cut that in half with my utility knife. I cut the first piece down to size, and then for the second piece, I cut that a lot smaller, and I also cut it in the middle so that I could glue it on either side of the cross. Now, before I glued this down to the front of my coffin, I did just glue it right to this cutting mat from Dollar Tree. Um, I didn't intentionally glue it to the mat, but I glued it together. It got stuck to the mat, which worked out because it held it in place so that I could paint it with my antique wax. Um, so once I had it glued and painted, then I also went in with some ink Waverly chalk paint as well to just make it look old and weathered and spooky. Once I removed it from my mat, then I went ahead and glued that to the front of my coffin. When I pulled it up, one of the pieces did, um, come apart but no big deal I just glued down the first part and then I glued the little pe the little cross piece down once I had the main piece glued down now to finish this off I glued the skeleton popping out of the coffin as well as the top of the coffin I wanted him to look like he had broke out of there literally you guys that was it for little mini DIY number one as you guys know, with being pregnant, sleep is one of the most important things. And here lately, I have not really been getting the best sleep. So I have been on the market for a new mattress and when Birch Living reached out, I was so excited because I've actually been wanting to try this mattress. Birch is a premium mattress in a box company that makes your mattress stylish, environmentally friendly, and definitely comfortable. 
I absolutely love the fact that these mattresses are not only non-toxic, but they're made right here in America, which is super important to me. So Mark's favorite feature is that it's really breathable and at night it keeps him really cool. He mentioned that he was shocked that he did not sweat through the night. So that's definitely a huge plus. So if you guys have been around for any amount of time, then you know that I've really been trying to make a conscious effort to use more environmentally friendly products. So I'm really happy to tell you that Birch is Green Guard certified, meaning that they don't use any harmful chemicals at all. I also appreciate the fact that it's good for the environment as well. They make sure that all their materials are harvested and sustained naturally. So I've had my mattress for a few months now, and my favorite part of the mattress is just how, uh, just like Mark, is how cool it keeps me. I love the fact that it's 100% non-toxic. Again, I'm really trying to make better choices when it comes to um, my products and being pregnant. I have kids. I really just want the best for them. I have also never fallen asleep faster. Sometimes it takes me a really long time to fall asleep. And with Birch, I literally hit the bed and I am out like a light. So with your Birch mattress, you get a 100 night sleep trial and the best part, it came straight to my door. It was so super easy to set up. My husband did most of the work and we literally set it up in about five minutes. So I love my Birch mattress and I know you will too. So if you guys are on the market for a new mattress, check out Birch, check the link in the description box below. Once you click it, it will save you $400 off and you'll get two free pillows. I'll leave the link right here on the screen for you guys. Don't forget, check the link in the description box below. And I wanna thank Birch Living for sponsoring today's video. For DIY number two, all I did was take a few different size popsicle sticks a square dowel rod and a piece of wood and I kind of marked out the wood of how big I needed it to be to fit inside of the little crate pieces. Next I took my saw and cut that down. My saw and all the tools that I used that I use <laughs> are always linked in my Amazon shop in the description box below. Next I take the popsicle sticks and I just cut them to size. I have a extra crate sitting out that way I could use that as kind of like a size guide so I just cut my popsicle sticks down to size and then I wanted these to look spooky of course so I just took my scissors and I just cut the ends of the smaller popsicle stick to look like a few pieces of old wood put together for the next one, all I did was cut like a point to it and then kind of cut some of that down. I didn't want it to be as thick as that popsicle stick was. And then for the third one, I did the same thing, but I left the thickness of that one. And I also go ahead and cut off or I should say cut into the ends to make that look like weathered wood as well and cut the tip off of one of them. I'm just trying to rough these up, like I said, um, so that they don't look so perfect. So you can do that as much or as little as you like, and then I sanded down the jagged edges. I glued down the dowel rod to my little mini piece of wood and then stained that with my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain. And once again, while the paint or while the stain, I should say, is still wet, I went in with a small paintbrush and my Ink Waverly chalk paint and just put a, a few streaks of black on our little post to make it look old and weathered. Next, I paint the little signs. Um, one of them, I use my antique wax. The middle one, I use my white Waverly chalk paint. And for the top one, I use my ink Waverly chalk paint using these new little chip brushes that I found on Amazon, which are linked in the description box below. To, to put the wording on this sign, I was really unsure what I was going to do with this, you guys. I thought about it. I almost went to the computer and printed something off, but I really didn't have much time for that. So I just checked in my stash and I had these mini transfers from last year. I was so excited because literally the saying was perfect. Um, the Spooks Galore is its own little mini transfer. 
and then something wicked this way comes is also another one and there were 12 in one so they cut up into mini transfers and like i said these were from last year that's why i always tell you guys if you see some on my site that you like grab them because they're reusable you can use them for years to come so once i had transferred on my images I laid down the base into one of those boxes so that I can make sure that I glued these on correctly and then I just glued them going in different directions. To finish this sign, I glued the little bat that I got from Dollar Tree down to the bottom and then I dry brushed some of my silver acrylic paint all over the bat as well as all over the little signs and you guys, look how stinking cute this little uh, directional sign is like can you believe how cute it is I absolutely love the way that this one turned out For the next mini DIY, I take another scrap piece of wood. This is actually the other half of that piece that I just cut. And I gave it a good coat of my white Waverly chalk paint. And while the paint was still dry, I used that same brush that I've been using in the antique wax to dry brush or I guess technically it's not dry brushing, but it blends it in and to me it looks like a weathered piece of wood. Once that was dried, then I had these skulls from Michaels and I glued three of them on top of each other going in different directions. And then I glued down this glittery spider from Dollar Tree. I'm not the biggest fan of glitter and I really did not like that bright orange color so I just covered it up with some floral moss and then I also just kind of randomly hot glued in places and put more moss once again to make this look like the grass has grown over it and it's been sitting there for a while it just gives to that spooky effect and I absolutely love the way that this one turned out and I love that these are super easy and anybody can do them for the next DIY, I take these new little decor pumpkins. I'm not really sure what you want to call it. I did not find these in stores. I found these on the Dollar Tree website, and I did go ahead and order a case of them. There were three different sizes, and the only one that fits in this box is the taller pumpkin with the stem at the top, so I just cut the stem off and then I give it two good coats of my white Waverly chalk paint. Once the chalk paint was dry, then once again I go in with my chip brush and my antique wax and I dry brush all the way around this faux pumpkin. Now it's going to be a little sign. And I also do the same thing with my ink wear really chalk paint as well so i was just showing you guys that i found these new chip brushes on amazon now they are not the mini chip brushes and they are not as good they shed like crazy so just beware but you get 30 of them for $11 and I'm actually really loving them. So I left them in my Amazon shop for you down in the description box below. Um, but once that was dry, then I took my transfer and I transferred on this wording. Now this is a transfer for the jars. However, you can use any wording from any transfer. Um, that's what I love most about them. They're so versatile. You don't have to use the whole thing. You can reuse them over and over and over again. So anyway, you guys, if you want any Chalk Couture info, text me the word chalk. My number is linked down below as well as in the pinned comment and in uh, the last slide of this video. Um, but anyway, once I was done transferring on that image, I did the exact same thing to another one, but I painted this one with my ink Waverly chalk paint, and then I dry brushed with my silver acrylic paint. Next, I go in with the other transfer to this set. There's two in one. And I transfer on that wording with my white paste and then I go over the stars with our new color. Mm -hmm. 
and literally you guys just like that you have a high-end looking sign that is one of my most favorite things about chalk couture it looks so high-end yet it really did not take me any time at all for the next project, I take this little jar that I had in my stash and I had already um, chalked on an image, but that's the beauty about it. It is removable if you use the paste. So I just wet it down and use my scraper tool to scrape away any excess paste and then wipe that off with a paper towel. I then take the transfer that I do want on there and I'm only using this little exclamation point. I forget what these are called. Um, warning label. There you go. <laughs> I transfer on that warning label with my yellow chalk paste. And then to make a little riser for this, it sat a little too low in the box. I just glued together six Jenga blocks, put that underneath, and look how nicely it sits up in these little boxes. For this next one, I use that same exact transfer that we were just working with, and I transfer on that skull with my white paste to a different jar. And once again, literally that easy, this one is completely done as well. For the next DIY, I put together another one of those little um, coffin treat boxes, and then I give that a good coat of my hammered silver spray paint. I make sure to spray paint outside. I'm pregnant. I do not need to be smelling those fumes, and even if I wasn't pregnant, I would definitely recommend to do this in a well-ventilated area. Um, oh, before I spray painted it, I did glue in some of those Jenga blocks so that this would not blow away. Um, I live in a really windy area, so I was afraid that it would blow away. So I did just sturdy that up a little bit with some Jenga blocks, no big deal. And then I took it outside and gave it a good coat of my hammered spray paint. Now those handles are linked in my Amazon store. I got a question about that last video that I used spray paint. So anything you guys see me using that you want info on, check my Amazon shop. If it's not there, then leave me a comment and I can find it and add it for you. So once the spray paint was dry, then I took my natural sponge from Walmart and some elephant Waverly chalk paint and just dabbed some of that chalk paint all the way around my coffin to tone down that silver color. And then I also did the same technique with my white Waverly chalk paint going a little less heavy handed. I then went in with my new chip brush and some ink Waverly chalk paint and just dry brushed all the way around the edges. I think this really brings out that technique and really makes it look realistic and actually look like it's metal. So it's totally up to you. You can leave that step out if you do not like that effect, but I personally think that it makes it look more realistic. I then go in with this with another chip brush and my antique wax and just kind of dab and then use my finger to blend that in to make this look like rust. I then cut another small piece of wood. Y'all, I love my saw so, so much. It comes in handy like all the time. I don't know what I would do without this tool. But anyway, I cut a little piece of wood and then stain that with my Dixie Belle Voodoo Stain. And once again, used my Ink Waverly chalk paint to um, put some streaks in that wood. After I make sure that it's good and dry, I then hot glue that to the bottom of my coffin. I transferred on that rest your bones and that this also is an image in the 12 little mini images that I got last year and I also glued two feet from the skeletons popping out of the top of the coffin. Um, I wanted it to look like he had fell or whatever. I just thought it gave it a really cool effect. And then I also glued some moss all around this coffin once again to make it look like it had been grown over. Thank you. 
And as I always tell you guys, all these little parts are optional. If you don't like the moss, leave that out. If you don't like the skeleton feet hanging out the top, leave that out. It's totally up to you. You can change it a different color um, to suit your decor. You can make different stuff. It just depends, you guys. Sometimes I think people get a little bit closed-minded and think that they have to recreate exactly what I'm doing, and that's just not the case. I want you guys to open up your minds a little bit, put a little bit of imagination into it and if you don't like the way mine looks then make your own version so I glued some more feet to the bottom and a skull just to give that spooky effect and that was it for our last little spooky coffin and I'm always curious to hear which DIY is your favorite in the comments down below Okay, friends, for the last and final DIY, if you're still around, type OG in the comments. You guys are amazing. But I do the exact same thing with those little faux pumpkins. I cut the top off, and then I gave it two good coats of my ink Waverly chalk paint. I then go in with my ivory Waverly chalk paint and heavily dry brush all the way around as well as in the middle. And I did go side to side to kind of make it look like mummy wrapping I guess I don't really know you guys <laughs> I'm not really too sure but that's what it reminded me of so once I was satisfied with the dry brushing then I took two of those little skeletons once again from that skeleton garland I put one going a little higher than the other marked their legs and then cut those down to size and glued it down with some hot glue and that was it for this one you guys super simple I didn't want these to be overly complicated I want everybody to feel like they're included and that they can do this because I'm telling you guys I have not always been a amazing crafter it takes practice and practice does not make perfect practice makes progress so don't forget that you guys um, don't be intimidated you can always redo it no big deal so I encourage you guys to try this project it looks a lot more intimidating than it actually is and I just want you guys to know that you literally can do anything you set your mind to so let me know down in the comments which little mini DIY was your favorite also, don't forget to text me if you guys want any ketone or chalk couture information. My number is linked at the, or not linked, my number is at the end, so check that out. And don't forget, you guys, we have a huge goal of getting to 100K in a month. It's a long stretch, but you know what? I am no quitter, so it's really just all in how, how you think and how you feel. And I'm not a quitter, so I have a huge goal of getting to 100K by October when baby boy gets here, and I know that we can do that together. So do all the youtube -y things. Hit that thumbs up, share this out, comment, like, I really appreciate it. Don't forget, if nobody has told you today, you are absolutely stunning. You are worthy. You are gorgeous. You are amazing. And you literally can do anything you set your mind to. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate every single one of you. I love y'all and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Check out the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload or join the DIY fam here to your right.